Hey, welcome back to another Serpents 3 introductory video. We're going to be covering portals. So a portal allows you to take information about something and magically whisk it across to any other node graph or location in your node graph and take that data and continue on with it. So what this does is this cleans up um, messy node noodles. So you've got a lot of noodles going places and you may want to clean that up, just having a couple of nodes taking up the location. And a better example of this would be something like on this sort of a node graph, where you've got a lot going on, and you need to make use of portals, like I've got here, to clean it up. So let's go ahead and jump right in. We'll fix just a small area that I want to clean up on my recursive function. And uh, if you like recursive function topics, I can add that in another video. But I've got, I've got a function that's going to be calling another function that goes in and recursively continues to call itself, and it's looking for a unique name, and then when it finds it, it will set that to a variable. So I'm coming in and I'm taking a look at all the objects in the scene, and then I'm looking for a name. And then I start looping through the objects in the scene until I compare against that name. And I want to, for each object I'm looping through, I'm going to add a portal here. So under Shift A, and this is going to be under going to be under Layout and then Portal. I just drag it across, and then I like to start mine out with the name Portal, and then I do a dash. You can do whatever you want for the name. I'm just going to call this um, looped object. And then you want to pick a unique color for your portal. Never match a portal with another exact portal's color. So I've got portals over here. Um, if you give them the exact same color, we'll start taking over that portal's data. So pick something that's slightly off and maybe darker. And this is the input for your portal. So you would drag in and put your blend data coming off of this. Or you could, you could do an integer if you wanted. It doesn't matter what data you're bringing in. You just need to make sure that um, you're keeping track of what it is. So this is a, a blend data type data socket. And I take my portal and I use Shift D to duplicate it. And then you, when you duplicate it, you got to make sure you turn it to the output. And then you match the data so I'm using blend data property, so I'm going to output the blend data property as well. And when you do it in this order, you'll have an in and an out, and you can have as many outs as you want. But if you duplicate and you don't make it an out, and you start changing the color, notice how it took over all the other portals that are tied to the out. Now if you wanted to make this unique, you can use this reset portal button and it will it will make this one unique and then this one's tied back to its portal information so I don't need an extra portal I'm going to delete that but just to let you know um, that's how you keep your portals together make sure you after you duplicate them you set them to out and then I like to just use the H key on the keyboard to hide it and then I just kind of bring the width in and then I duplicate it from here now that it's an output. So everywhere that I'm using this item, I'm going to bring my portal over instead. And now I've successfully cleaned up a part of my graph make it easier to read. And that's all there is to portals. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll catch you on the next one.